All right, you guys enjoying your Christmas break so far? Yeah? Who's going to sleep in a little bit tomorrow? All right, some of you are going to sleep in a little bit tomorrow. Good for you. Good for you. I, I think you deserve it. I think you deserve it, and I'll tell you why. I think you deserve it because you guys have done a lot of stuff this year. You've done a lot, and I've, I've got a few pictures I want to show you. The class of 2016, last year 6th graders, this year 7th graders collected. Does anyone remember how many cans you collected? Can someone shout that number out for me? More than 2,000? Okay. Okay. Well, well over 2,000 cans for the food pantry, which is pretty exciting. Last year's confirmation class built wells for Africa. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, I got some fist bumps going on there. Good job. Good job. You guys know about Rachel, and she uh, collected and knitted and crocheted more than 1,000 hats, and she's sick of everyone talking about it. She got to deliver those on Wednesday. It was pretty cool. And this is what I think is the coolest thing of all. You guys started telling your friends about what happens here. And uh, real quick, just let me drop this number on you. This semester alone, just since September, more than 500 students have heard something about Jesus in this building and in this room, and that's because of you. So give yourselves a round of applause. That's really cool. I could go on. I could talk about how much incredible stuff you guys have done, but I'm, I'm not going to do that this morning because I've got some other stuff I want to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about Christmas, which shouldn't come as much of a surprise. And if you were here last week, remember we talked about humility. We talked about how Jesus was God, but he was still born in a manger, which is an extraordinarily humble place to be born. Jesus could have been born anywhere he wanted to be born. God was God. God had power. But Jesus wanted to, to be humble, to be fully human, and to maybe teach us a little lesson about what it means to be humble. And I told you about the shepherds, the shepherds who were out on their hill just hanging out when they had to go down to this manger to see the baby Jesus. And that's where I want to pick it up right now. Um, I'm going to read you this scripture. These should be in order. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Then suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has done. Let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has done. You got these shepherds on the hill watching their sheep and the angels appear to them and they react the same way that you would react if your little sister came and told you there was a giraffe in your backyard. You would say, this I'm going to have to see. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. You're a liar. I'm going to look out there. And the shepherds awoken by this angel kind of freak out. They had this freak out moment because if this really is happening, then we have to leave right now to go see it. Because once they saw Jesus, they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond anything the angels told them, that this was real. This was really happening. It's what they'd waited for for so long, and finally it was really, really happening. And they went down there, and they saw Jesus, who was a baby, and I told you about babies last week. They sleep and they can't feed themselves and they go to the bathroom on themselves. And I was not there. I wasn't there when the shepherds saw Jesus. I didn't see baby Jesus. I'm not that old. And I don't know what it was that they saw about Jesus that had them convinced. Because 
He was a baby. I don't know what qualities of a baby he had that made them say, yeah, that's it. But they saw something in Jesus, and I know that the next thing that happened is they looked at him, they said, yes, this is the Savior, and they went out and they started telling people. The biggest struggle that I have as a Christian, and I think the biggest struggle that most people have as Christians, is that sometimes we doubt our faith. And I remember I always used to think, you know, if if I could have been alive 2,000 years ago, if I could have actually seen Jesus, if I could have met Jesus, if I could have touched Jesus, hung out with Jesus, gone fishing with Jesus, then I wouldn't have any more doubt. I would know, I would know beyond the shadow of a doubt what was going on if I could have been there 2,000 years ago. That's not really worth dwelling on because I I can't go back to 2,000 years ago. And I'm not even really sure if I would want to because I would have to give my iPod back. But if I could have been there 2,000 years ago, would I know Jesus any better than I know Jesus right now? There's these stories in the Bible, right, of people who, who follow Jesus. Here's one. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and began to, he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi sitting at the tax collector's booth. All right? Get this picture in your head. Jesus is walking. He sees this guy at a tax collector's booth. Jesus looks at him and says, hey, follow me. And Levi got up and followed him. My parents, when I was a kid, told me not to do that with strangers. They said that was a bad choice. But Levi saw something in Jesus right away that said, yeah. And I don't know what it was. I don't know what he saw. It's probably something similar to what the shepherd saw when Jesus was a baby. Next story. Jesus goes up to these fishermen, says, follow me, and, and they leave their nets. So they didn't, they didn't just go with him. They just left everything behind. And I think it's because they got to see Jesus. At least that's what I wanted to think. They saw Jesus, and when you see Jesus, you just know. And when you know, there's no room for doubt. And doubt is sometimes what makes it really tough for us to follow Christ. Because we don't get to experience him like those first disciples experienced him, like the shepherds experienced him. Having faith in Jesus is sometimes like getting in a car... And trusting you're going the right direction, even though every time you look into the driver's seat, you don't see anyone there. That's the level of trust it takes. We don't get to always know with certainty what's happening. Faith just says, I trust that we're going to end up somewhere good, at least eventually. You need to know that it's okay to experience doubt. That is okay. It is normal. It is expected. If you're a Christian, you're going to experience doubt. Because if you don't ever question your faith, that probably means you're not thinking. And Jesus never said that he didn't want us to think. Doubt is okay. I experience doubt. You experience doubt. Your refinery teachers experience doubt. And the disciples, the people who saw Jesus and hung out with Jesus, they experienced some pretty dramatic seasons of doubt too if you really dig into the New Testament. Everyone who's followed Jesus has had doubts and that, that's okay. There's nothing, nothing at all wrong with that. And this is kind of a downer so far because I'm talking a lot about doubt and doubt is sad and this is Christmas and I'm supposed to talk about happy things So I bring you good tidings of great joy. I've got good news. Good tidings. And the good news is this. The disciples who got to see Jesus, got to touch Jesus, got to experience Jesus, that was great for them. But we have something that they didn't have. The disciples got to see Jesus and we don't. But we have something that they didn't have and that's this. We get to know the whole story. We get to know what happened with Jesus, what happened to Jesus, what Jesus did. And the disciples, I mean, if you really think about it, the disciples didn't get to know any of that. We got that story about Levi who starts following Jesus, only he has no idea really where they're going. He has no idea what's going to happen. 
And we know this because when Jesus is crucified, the disciples scatter. If they would have known the story, if they would have had this whole thing written down in a Bible like we do, they would have understood, oh yes, the crucifixion is a necessary step so that we can be forgiven for our sins, and not to worry, Jesus is going to be back in a couple of days. The disciples didn't know any of that. They watched him get crucified, they watched him die, and they freaked out, and they left. Because it turns out that knowing Jesus personally might not be as beneficial to a wise decision as knowing what's going to happen. The most important thing we know that the disciples didn't know, we get to know how the story ends. We get to know how the story ends. It doesn't end with the crucifixion. There's a resurrection after that. The disciples who were watching Jesus feed these people with these fish didn't know it was going to work out. We get to know how the story ends. And the disciples, they were with Jesus. They hung out with Jesus. But when it came to figuring out what was going on most of the time, they were completely in the dark. This is what I was thinking. I was thinking if we had some sort of crazy time machine and you could make a decision. You could make a decision, Ian. Are you going to fight in the Revolutionary War? All right, we're going all the way back. Are you going to fight in the Revolutionary War? Let me ask you a question. Which one of these would make your decision easier? If you had breakfast with George Washington, or if you knew what we know, that's America's going to win. If you had a couple of thousand dollars to spend, now a couple thousand dollars sitting in your pocket back in the mid-80s, and you wanted to invest it in the stock market, which would help you make a good decision? Having coffee with Bill Gates or the knowledge that we have that Microsoft is going to make like a bazillion dollars? It's the knowledge. When you know how the story ends, you can make a good decision. And we know how Jesus' story begins. We know the middle of it. We know the stuff he did. And we ultimately know how the story ends if we're just willing to open our Bibles every now and again and read about it. The story goes like this.
This is a story that I know. I know that Christ was born, to, born as God's son to two people in a manger in Bethlehem. He was visited by shepherds and wise men and was raised by two God-fearing parents. He grew up right. He grew up without sin. And when he was about 30 years old, he was tempted by the devil. He healed the blind and he raised the dead. He fed the hungry and he started a ministry that changed the world. He was killed on a cross for a crime that he didn't commit and then three days later he rose from the dead See, I never saw Jesus. I never touched him with my hands. I never heard him with my ears. But I know the story, and I know the story ends because a man without sin died so that I wouldn't have to. I didn't watch it happen, but I know that the story ends when Jesus is alive so that I can also be alive. The most amazing thing about this story is that you and I have a part to play in it. We're a part of the story. God didn't just do this. He did it for us and calls us to response, right? We say, God, thank you for what you did and I will follow you. And when you say those words with your, with your mouth and you mean it with your heart, then you're a part of this remarkable story that we know. This remarkable story, we know how it ends. God's going to win. God is going to win. That's what it started at the, in the manger, and God is going to win, and we have a chance to be a part of it.